is Tony's USPSA gun. Unironically, Tony actually competes with this gun. And the re What's going on, Internet? I'm here to talk to you today with somebody who you will know after this uh, Nationals. This is Tony. Tony is uh, GM26. Tony, why do I call you GM26? He calls me GM26 because I'm the 26th GM in Carry Optics. That's not why. Oh, I guess. Uh, <laughs> I guess my claim to infamy is uh, I use a Glock 26 for USPSA. So this is Tony's. USPSA gun. Unironically, Tony actually competes with this gun. And the reason this is important is because Tony is on pace at this Nationals to place pretty well. I mean, middle of pack G at least. I mean, potentially top, top, 20, top, 20. top 20. So he's going to be one of the top 20 shooters in the nation shooting a Glock 26. A lot of people who want to get into USPSA ask me a lot and say, hey, what gun should I buy to go compete? My answer is always, use whatever gun you have, it doesn't really matter. And Tony, why do you use a Glock 26 in USPSA? Well, do you want the long story or the short story? Uh, let's go with the long story. All right, the long story is um, I got into shooting about uh, two years ago and um, I bought like a whole set of guns. I bought like a Glock 19, Glock 34, Glock 26, Glock 43. So I had everything from a micro compact all the way to a full size competition gun. And this was actually the the only gun out of my entire uh, collection that I could not shoot. So I thought this gun is trash and I didn't touch it for an entire year. And so when I got back into comp uh, competition shooting, or I guess when I got into competition shooting, um, I decided one day to pull out all my guns and just give them all a try again. And I noticed that the 26 was shooting exactly where I wanted it to shoot. And then I had a realization at that point where it's not the gun, it was my garbage technique this entire time. And so after that, I just like, okay, I'm only gonna use the gun uh, because it allows me to see my weaknesses quicker. And from there, I can improve faster. And so that's why, yeah, I just, my favorite. So did you start with irons or did you start with dots? I shot with irons and then I switched to carry optics about uh, three or four months ago. So you've only been shooting dots for three or four months, and you're already a GM in... Yeah, yeah. So the funny thing is, uh, I was, uh, I, as of this video, I was at C-Class, I believe, two and a half months ago, or two months ago, something like that. And I'm... You don't know this, Tony, but you're going to share a lot of your match video with me, and these good people are going to be watching oh, a, well, a B-roll of your match video. Well, good thing there's not many videos out there, so... Well, <laughs> we'll fix that tomorrow. Okay. Uh, but Tony is a legitimately quick shooter. His, I mean, how far off the pace are you today based on your section? I have no idea, but in my zone, I'm third in my zone as of now. Um, but after the Super Squad goes through, I'll probably be like 30th or something, so. Either way, I think he's gonna make top 20. Uh, red Dot, would you say that the Red Dot helped you see what was going on with the muzzle so you were able to improve between the baby gun and the red dot, you could see what was going on and tell what's um, happening, use a diagnostic tool or what? I see what you're saying, um, but I've always been mostly a target focused shooter, so to me it didn't really matter much. Um, but yes, when you see the dot, it gives you more information. So it helps me shoot faster and I guess more accurately. Since you've been shooting USPSA, since you already have your vaunted G card, yes. I'm sure you have lots of people ask you like, well, hey, what, what should I be doing? All sorts of things like that. Of course, of course. So the most important thing, I had to drink my water real quick, um, is that if you want to get GM, obviously you have to get a Glock 26 because so far it's 100%. You have to buy a gun to become a GM, just it, like all the gun companies yeah, tell you. I mean, it's 100% like, Everyone who's used a 26 has gone GM with it. Think about that. <laughs> it has a 100% success rate yeah, in carry optics. So it's different phases, because what it takes to get to B class is different than what it takes to get to A class, M class, GM. Um, I think I'm gonna kind of reiterate what JJ Rikaza said, is that if you want to you know, get to GM, you kind of have to have the gun manipulation skills. And I think that's very important from uh, C to M. Like you can get to M class with just gun manipulation. And the extra step to get from M to GM, in my experience, has been kind of kind of counterintuitive. Like when you shoot matches, um, in my opinion, if you're shooting anything that doesn't really matter to you, like anything that's not a major in this case, um, kind of just go 
with no regard to accuracy, just shoot the stage as fast as humanly possible. And then from there, your eyes will learn to see things quicker. And that was a big help for me, uh, but it might not work for everyone. So talk to me about your training practice. You do dry fire and live fire, obviously. What is your ratio of dry fire to live fire? So when I first started, I dry fired a lot. Um, nowadays, in a week, I probably dry fired maybe like five minutes, to be honest. Really? Five minutes, yeah. Um, and lately, the last three weeks, uh, my dry fire has actually been without a gun. I, I put up blue painter's tape all over my apartment, and I literally just look at tape. And well, I, I know that sounds a little bit ridiculous, but it's just training my eyes to focus. Because I know my index is decent enough where it doesn't really matter to have a gun in my hand. It's all about being able to transition your eyes and focus really on what you're looking at. Interesting. So it sounds like a good, hard target focus. I mean, in the practical shooting, yes, it is. Your ability to not get distracted by what's going on in front of your face and focus on a point on the target probably is the most important thing Yeah, yeah it's uh, to do it well uh, in leaving the shots behind as they happen and not yeah. hanging out and confirming with that third sight picture. So yeah, I think um, when most people think about their training regimen, they have uh, dry fire practice. They kind of confirm that in live fire. And then during a match, they kind of tie everything together and see where they actually stand during a match situation. So in my eyes, they're only training maybe half of their potential. Um, and the way I think about it is I treat matches as a training uh, situation as well, as well. So I train live fire, dry fire, and matches. I do it all the same way. So I don't use any confirmation time. Like, I don't take a match to confirm whether or not I train well. I, I just keep training. And I only really shoot uh, at my comfortable pace during let's say at Nationals, and everything else I just treat as a practice. So I first met Tony at Area 4 where he was competing in open minor with his yeah. Glock 26 yeah. uh, to further his point where he's getting a disadvantage, air quotes, with a Glock 26 in carry optics, but in open minor... Uh... Well, I mean, to, like, to be fair, I, I did it because I don't want to think about equipment. So I shoot, if it's not Nationals, I will shoot open minor. So all my local matches will be open minor. and. Yeah, it's just so I don't have to think about equipment rules and I don't have to care you know, about whether or not there's a classification or anything. But now that I'm in gym, it doesn't really matter. I think experimentation is what's needed in order to, to break out your, your current level. Because if you're training within your comfortable zone, you're never going to really improve because you're always staying inside that comfortable sure, zone. Sure, sure. So in order to push past that boundary, you have to be uncomfortable. And so I'll, it, for local matches, I just shoot like um, as fast as humanly possible, I'd probably pick up 10 mics, 5 no shoots, like 20 deltas, it doesn't matter. <laughs> um, I shoot, sometimes I shoot like 70% of my little points. So really? It's, yeah, it's not. That's pretty bad. <laughs> I, it, it is very bad and you know, I get beat by like pretty much everyone, but at the end of the day, it's, I don't care. You made a comment, I heard secondhand a comment you made to Brian, who is in the house with us, that you have to do that in matches to sort of break your ego and get yeah. beyond being yeah. afraid of shooting Charlie's to truly shoot fast. Well, you, you have to uh, not be afraid of missing. Um, because if, like, let's say this, if you shoot two alphas, are you really learning anything? Right, think about that. Yeah, right? but, yeah. that. That just means that you're shooting comfortable enough where you can hit where you were looking. So you have to go beyond that. And where, like if you do that only during live fire practice, but not during a match, you're not gonna have that match pressure. Well, I feel like there is an important caveat there that at this point you have developed the good habits and fundamentals to get the gun up consistently sure, yes. for the most part. Yes. I think Matter there probably is yes, a yes. baseline level of proficiency before you can start to operate at that speed. I mean, because somebody who has a terrible, terrible okay. foundation is yes. going to do that and not have great results. In yes, yes, that, that is a, that's a good point. Um, I think it's very good to have a stable, accurate platform to work from or like baseline. So for me, when I first started shooting, I was already accurate. Like before I even picked up a gun, um, for some reason I knew that I was gonna be good at shooting. And as arrogant as that sounds, uh, coming from the, you know, next to the arrogant <laughs> No, it's the Humble Marksman channel. Oh, oh well, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. That it's was, one on the main channel. Oh, that's a twin. Oh, yeah, okay. I, yeah. I still need to meet That guy's there. a jerk. Yeah, okay, I, I hear that. I hear that. But <laughs> yeah. I think he's just- Taurus owners don't like him right here. Taurus suck, by the way. Uh, <laughs> Anyway, um, so 
Yeah, I was already pretty accurate. Like if I took my time, I can stack everything inside like a one inch circle or um, at about seven to 10 yards. So I was already decently accurate, even though I didn't know how to hold the gun at all. And so, yeah, I think that's probably what's needed first. And then from there, you got manipulation, and then from there, just go nuts with stages. So you use an interesting grip. Uh, if you wouldn't mind, show show the nice people at home how you're doing your grip. Sure, yeah, so the, uh, the gun is obviously clear. Um, I'm gonna point it into the wall. Uh, so when I first started shooting, um, I kind of had like the normal thumbs uh, forward grip like this, but then on a smaller gun like the 26, it obviously there's a lot. I mean, there's not much to hold on to. So then I had to adapt, and I have a trigger finger grip with my thumb, just basically above the slide. And sometimes it kind of covers the the optic as well. But yeah, this is this is how I hold my my gun. His thumb is literally higher than the ejection port over the ejection port. His uh, left hand pointer finger almost touches the first knuckle of his trigger finger and uh yeah. the gun stays flat and tracks very well um, yeah and, and i don't really hold on tight to my gun out there um so a lot of people are like oh man it's, don't you like do you have to like grip it like no death grip and um, you know just hold it comfortably casually um, but that so talk to me what's going on with your forearms when you grip the gun i don't think about it like the only thing i tell myself is to relax my shoulders so if I'm shooting, I notice my shoulders are tense. I'm like, relax my shoulders, and that's it. I don't think about. Interesting. I don't so think you about don't even hands, worry about your wrist lock or anything like that. I don't think about any of that stuff. No, or at least not on a conscious level. Interesting. Yeah. Pick that, pick that bad boy up, grip it like you would. Yeah, you're, you're locking your wrists, yeah. even though you're not thinking about it. You're locking them. Interesting. Well, I let the gun dance, let it do its thing. This is your first nationals that you're attending now. First nationals, yeah. Second major. Second major. After se Area 4. Area 4 was his first major, yeah. <laughs> where he shot open minor. Yeah. And this is his actual competition holster, which is roughly the size of a wallet, which is really amusing to see hanging off a belt. Well, all right. Any, any other parting tips, anything that you say on the range to everybody that you want to say now so you don't have to say it as much or? Um, so the gun, does not matter. Unless if you're shooting an HK, I've never seen anyone do well with an HK. <laughs> um, and then when you're shooting a stage, don't be afraid to go as fast as you physically can. Because a lot of people, I think the mistake is that they're trying to get good, right? So they're, they don't think about their movement from place to place. They think about, oh, how accurate or how good my hits. But the thing is, the sport is, you need fast times as well. And if you can't physically go from point A to point B as fast as it should fastest people, you'll never be at the top. So you want to be able to get that speed and see if you can get that speed. If you can get that speed, then all it is is just getting used to it. So then eventually your mics become deltas and your deltas become charlies. And at that point, I mean, you're gonna dominate your local club and and you know, hopefully extend that to nationals. So what are your goals with shooting? Why, why are you uh, doing what you're doing with the Glock so 26? So my goal is to win a world shoot in 2026 with the Glock 26. With the Glock 26? With the Glock 26. And so GM 26. And, and my stepping stone actually for 2025, I, I want to win the Nationals. You want to win Carry uh, Optics Nationals. Yeah. So you're going to beat Max Michelle in 2025. Yeah. Well, um, the time is on your side. Max is no spring chicken these oh, days. That, that's why I'm waiting for 2025. <laughs> you know, I, I hear the, uh, I hear, uh, you know, SIGs kind of break down over time, so no, I'm kidding. He's, he's a very, very good shooter. Um, and there's very stiff competition carry optics nowadays as well. Uh, but yeah, that's just a, kind of like a fun goal to have. It's, it's worth uh, mentioning that at this USPSA Nationals, there's only, I think, 28 Gs in carry optics right now. Yeah, pl 20 plus, yeah. There are 22 of them present at the match, but probably more impressively is there are 64 masters in carry optics. So we were, I'm on a squad with mostly CO masters and we were just discussing it like, you have to be an absolute murderer in carry optics to place well because there's so yeah. much talent in it these days. Yeah. So it's if it's not the most competitive division, it, it's getting pretty close. Yeah, it's, it's, I think in about two, three years, it'll probably, my guess is that it'll be 50% of the shooters will be CO. Yeah, I, I don't doubt it, yeah. I think that it's, become what open used to be back in the day but wow. it's, it's nice because it's like production open it is yeah production so you have open. more people that can get into it as well so if you could change one thing about uspsa what would it be um i mean personally i really enjoy it uh there's nothing really that's uh i can complain about um 
maybe merge all the divisions just to open. So just have an open division and yeah, everyone just shoots whatever they want. So you just want to beat everybody with your 26? No, not that. I mean, just, just shoot, just one division. It makes everything simpler. That was the beginning of USPSA, so. Yeah. The glory days. Yeah, there we go. Well, appreciate you guys watching. Now's a good time to hit that like button, subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already, and we'll catch you on the next one. Oh, uh, yeah, I'll put you in your Instagram and crap will be up there so that people can. I don't have you. Instagram. You don't have Instagram? No. What kind of self respecting USPSA <laughs> shooter doesn't have Instagram? Uh, well, it's, um, I hear it's. My, my Instagram channel is actually Humble Marksman. <laughs> I can't believe you don't have Instagram. No, I don't. All right, Tony. Thank you. All right, well